Hello everyone and welcome to a new vlog. I think these days are the best moments in which you as a photographer can understand better your past photos. I think the key to evolving as a photographer is to understand what worked and what didn't work in your older photos so that you can learn something new and apply to new photos. Now I think that um, you can also do this by yourself or you can uh, do this by employing the services of a professional photographer and based on what he's telling you you can learn from that process but it's not mandatory you don't have to employ a professional photographer you can do it yourself you can learn to evaluate your photos by yourself and in this video this is what i want to present to you a simple way in which you can perfect your photos by evaluating your photos and understanding what is happening inside your photos. Now, before I start, I should say that it's better to run this video on a separate device and have one of your photos opened in a different device or on a different device just to practice what I'm saying because I think that you'll get a much bigger value if you're applying what I actually say. Step one of this process is to understand what the photo is about. Now, this means that you will look at your photo and you will identify the point of interest, the subject, the reason for which you took that photo. Now, without this element, if uh, the photo is nothing, you should understand that no matter what are the light situ are the light conditions, how spectacular it is, how many hours you hiked to get there, if you don't have a subject in your photo, then your photo is nothing. Now, once you identified that uh, point, I think it's very important to ask yourself a few uh, other side questions. Is this point big enough? Now, if the subject is really small in the photo, then that subject is not the subject. The subject should have um, a decent size. But in landscape photography, the subject should not occupy the entire photo because landscape photography is not portrait photography. So you need a decent size, not too big, not too small, uh, just enough size to also have room for a composition to uh, present the, um, the subject. Second question that you need to ask. Are there any other elements in the photo that are brighter than my subject? If there are, ask yourself if you could remove that by cropping, by cloning, or in the actual moment that you took the photo, if you could have positioned the camera in a different way so that you could have uh, avoided those elements. Why? Because those elements can compete with your subject. Um, now, the other uh, question that you need to ask is where the subject is located. Because if it's in the lower part of the photo, this is a photo of... Uh, perspective. You're presenting basically a, pers uh, a, a panoramic or, or something that the subject is looking at. A small house uh, on a hill and you see the vast valley in the distance. So you need, uh, you need a reason for which you have it in the lower part and usually that is presented in the background. If the subject is placed in, uh, in the upper part of the photo, ask yourself this other question. Is my subject too close to the edge? Usually when you're drawing the rule of thirds, you have a square in the middle of your photo. You should roughly have the subject in that square. In the middle, you can break the rule of thirds or on one of those four corners. But more than that, towards the edges of the photo, I think it's too much. Why? Because um, the subject will create a really strong point of contrast placing it uh, near the edges of the photo. And when you have that big of a contrast, the eye will look straight there. And the composition that you, you thought and you planned, it's, it's, it's useless. The, the eye will not take that journey to get to the subject. It will go straight to the subject because of its contrast. Step two is evaluating the composition. Now, I know you're a beginner because that's why you're interested in learning how to evaluate your photos. So I will not deal with complicated uh, talks about composition because we can lose the point of, uh, right here. So I will try to stay as simple as possible. And as you will grow as a photographer, you'll learn more com about composition. And when you apply this step two, you'll be able to uh, apply it much in a much more deeper and technical aspect. But for now, just ask yourself this. If the photo is taken with a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens, 
This is the basic question. If you took the photo with a wide-angle lens, then look at the foreground element because when you're photographing with a wide-angle lens, you should have foreground. You will have, you will have because it's wide. It's it's everything in the shot, so you will have a foreground element or elements in the shot. Now, if the foreground of the photo is simple grass, uh, bushes, trees with no leaves on uh, their branches, simple snow, simple gravel, um, dirt. Uh, just plain old ground, leaves that are on the ground that says nothing. Basically, you have a clutter or a collection of elements that don't say anything, that don't point in the right direction, then, then it's not a good foreground element. A good foreground element should be big enough to uh, start the journey, but not that imposing that it dominates the subject. So this is a very important uh, question that you need to ask. Now, if you uh, have a foreground element, maybe you don't have an, a, a foreground that looks bad. Maybe you do have foreground element. Then take a look at where it's positioned. In the lower part of the photo, to the left or to the right. Then look again to your subject. The subject should be positioned in the upper part of the photo, in the opposite corner. You have the foreground in the lower left, you have the subject in the upper right. And vice versa. Foreground in the lower right, subject in the upper left of the photo. Uh, if you have the other situation that you took the photo with a telephoto lens, then you should have a clear, sharp subject. You should have um, or you should identify different elements that could speak about depth. In uh, my case, for example, I like to introduce different uh, ridges of different hills or different mountains to show this repetition to present depth. And usually the composition is fairly simple. It's a really big uh, leading line that takes you or takes your attention to the subject that you've identified in step one. Now we're getting to step three, and that is distracting elements. Usually in landscape photography, it's more about the elements that you should not include in your photo than the elements that you have in your photo. So the, the, the thing that is very uh, a very good exercise is once you identify a subject that you want to photograph, is to ask yourself, okay, what are the elements that are around that subject that I don't want in the photo because those elements could distract the viewer from looking at my subject. Now, distracting elements can be all sorts of elements. And usually the eye, the human eye, will notice for example, uh, spots of color and light. This means that if you have, take a look at your, at your photo, and if you have too much sky in your photo with no clouds, then it's not a good thing because it creates a really big area of contrast and uh, your, the, 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 viewer's eye, the viewer's attention will be on that uh, particular element. Uh, what else? Um, other areas that have much more that are much brighter than the subject. If you have big blurry elements right in, in front of your photo, I um, I know that this is a trend on Instagram shooting through br branches or uh, or having flowers really close to the to the camera and avoid having big blurry elements in front of the of the viewer in the foreground. It doesn't look that good. Um, what else? Uh, look at the photo uh, with your eyes like this, squinted like this. If you, you'll be able to kind of guess the composition and the brighter spots of the of the photo. If the composition kind of leads you into a direction and your subject is in another direction, then you're not doing a good job supporting the subject. So these are the distracting elements that you should pay close attention to. Step four is related to editing mistakes. Usually when people are starting to edit their photos, if they are beginners, they will think that increasing the contrast and increasing the saturation will produce an interesting you know, or, or a much more interesting photo. And usually this is not the case. So if your photo has too much contrast, too much contrast means that um, you have really, really dark areas and really, really bright areas in your photo. And the, 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 the contrast between these two, it's not, uh, it's it's not balanced, it's, it, it hurts the eye. Or when you have really huge saturation, the, the photo is out of this planet, you can have uh, a slightly higher saturation, but you can have this on 
just a f just few elements or on the subject to emphasize it you can't have all the photo like it's from another plan like it's in like it's a disney cartoon i mean it it can look i don't know overwhelming for the eye to to process that big of a contrast and that big of a saturation uh, what else? Too much sharpness. I often see this in when people lower the resolution of their photos, they apply too much sharpness or they uh, have a plugin and they don't know how to conf configure it and just goes uh, and they, they just go all overboard with, sat with, uh, with sharpness and usually this will not look good on the edges of the mountain, um, on the tree branches for example. Small elements when they get really really over the edge with the sharpening they look bad um, what else uh, when you raise the shadows too much and you drop down the highlights too much and you get that old hdr look that it's not pleasant you get that strange look or you get a flat look from the photo because you're raising the shadows and uh, taking down the highlights if the photo is not straight take a look at the horizon line if it's not straight then it will look strange. It will look like it will go to one side or the, the other. Now, what, I, what else? Uh, people would will edit their photos until they damage it. And this results in bending in spots of color, usually the sky, or other chromatic aberrations or other things that go overboard. Step number five. It's about a habit that you need to uh, create from all this. So be consistent with your evaluation. Apply this process that I already told you or create your own process to evaluate your photos. Just apply it every time, especially if you are a beginner. You'll notice that over time, if you're doing this, you'll start noticing patterns. You'll start noticing things that are working and things that are not working and also in time, you will start to learn more about landscape photography, more about composition, about settings, about editing, and you'll be able to incorporate all that to kind of like a workflow. You'll create your personal workflow and you will evolve. But let me tell you this, the key of evolving as a photographer is to constantly pay attention to the work that you're doing and to self, to, to, to do a conscious evaluation of your photos. Now, if you're really, really struggling with self-evaluating your photos and you really don't know from where to begin, I have a service, it's called Online Mentoring for Landscape Photographers. The link is in the description of this video. Go check it out. If you're interested, just send me a message. Uh, and at the end of this video, I will tell you, keep on photographing. It's the only way to get better. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Bye-bye.